Hello and welcome to Deckel's dinner table of Intellivision once again. Uh, over the last six, six months I've been uh, a little distracted by other projects and I haven't had much chance to look at uh, Imdi. However, today I'd like to share the first version of Synthy, the software synthesizer that will be used with Imdi. My goal in trying to create uh, Synthy was to put together something that would be comparable with entry-level keyboards from the 1980s, such as this Yamaha PSS-160. However, having gotten one, I have found out that although they're nominally square wave keyboards, uh, their output is uh, anything but. I'm guessing what's happening here is that the core square wave sound is being post-processed by passive components uh, within the keyboard to give a, a richer variety of sounds. Although still not terribly realistic. So with Synthy, um, what we have is uh, a simple six voice polyphonic keyboard. Uh, it's very similar to a uh, simple, synth simple synthesizer that Joe Z put together. Um, uh, it adds control of the amplitude and pitch envelopes for each of the voices. So it works a little bit uh, like uh, Volker, Korg, Volker Keys, uh, which uh, in its simplest form does not sound dissimilar to a, um, uh, a square wave keyboard, although it's using a sawtooth, um, but allows you to soften the sound with an amplitude envelope like that. So in Synthy we have a similar thing. When you uh, fire everything up you get a very simple um, uh, set of envelopes which is the kind of um, basic entry level stuff. But um, within the UI uh, what we can do is to yeah, add some attack for example. Etc. Now you'll see here that the UI is very simple at the minute, uh, it just comprises a list of parameters and I navigate through them using up and down on the uh, left controller and I change the values using right and left. Easy peasy. So um, over on the left here we have the parameters for the volume envelope, so if I set these all to their maximum value uh, we can hear what effect they have, oh, no, except, no, that's right, yeah, okay. So attack, hold, decay and release are periods of time, so I'm extending um, each of those phases of the envelope. And sustain is the amount that the volume attenuates in during the sustain phase. So if I now hit a note, what we'll hear is sound volume builds very slowly. It now holds at its maximum value, it then decays a bit, and now sits at a sustained value, and that will be maintained for as long as I hold the note. And then once I release the note, it will die to silence. So um, we can put in a slightly more sensible set of values. So we have um, we have uh, six note polyphony, that's two note polyphony. Um, so that's uh, that's the volume uh, side of things. What we also have um, is a pitch envelope. Um, so what we have is like the Volker keys again. We have an ability uh, to mix a low frequency oscillator and use it to control the. Um, to control the frequency of the note. So if I increase this, you'll hear that the note being played changes over time. In this case, what we have is a falling sawtooth wave that is a change in the pitch of the note. Okay, so within Synthy, uh, we have a very similar thing over here. So we have a number of different waveforms that we can choose from. Um, and we can set a period for this low frequency oscillator. So that 
uh, runs from 60 hertz at a period of zero through to about half a hertz at a period of uh, 15. So let's set a nice long period so that we can hear what's going on. Uh, the amplitude parameter will control uh, how much the pitch uh, is shifted of the underlying note. So I'll give it a bit in the middle. So waveform zero uh, actually is uh, no pitch shift at all. Fine. Uh, waveform one is a rising square wave, so it starts low and then goes high. Waveform two is a falling square wave. Waveform three is a uh, rising sawtooth. Waveform 4 is similar to what we heard on the Volker keys, a falling sawtooth. Waveform 5 is a triangle wave that rises initially. And waveform 6 is a, a triangle wave that initially falls. So by reducing the, um, the period of the um, the um, LFO. What we can do is to get that familiar kind of warbling sound, which uh, you hear in a lot of uh, retro music. And again, you still have uh, full um, six-note polyphony. So that's the kind of basic pitch uh, waveforms that we have. And uh, now you'll notice that there are a couple of other controls down the bottom here. So the first is uh, the um, uh, is a different kind of amplitude control. So this amplitude here is uh, fixed. Uh, what this amplitude value does is it will add a contribution from uh, the volume envelope. So it will allow the pitch to the amount of pitch uh, warbling to change as the note is played. So if I flip, it's most clearly heard in a square square wave, and. If I flip this back and give it plenty, as they say, hopefully, you will be able to hear that the amount of warbling is uh, increasing so and decreasing as the note goes on. So what I'll do is just increase the period over which the attack and uh, decay occur, and it should become clearer again. Now the final control that we have uh, is uh, retrigger, and so this will control whether or not um, the uh, frequent the oscillator uh, operates as a one shot or um, uh, continually cycles. So at the moment it's set to retrigger to continually cycle, and again we can hear this most clearly if we have a nice long period. Let's, let's reduce the attack. for this to work sensibly. Okay. So um, what we should now hear here is uh, that we only get a single shot now of the um, square wave. And now the high note will be held. And likewise for the triangle we will get one uh, rise or fall and then the high or low note is held. And for the triangle, we get one rise from fall and then the, the low note is held. So there we go. That's what we have at the moment. Now, obviously, I've been playing all of this on the ECS and you can see it's completely compatible with the ECS. But obviously, because this is connected uh, through um, Indy, we can also play it on um, a regular um, MIDI keyboard. And at that point, we also uh, have... velocity sensitivity as well which is quite cool so um, yes so that's what we have uh, so far as you can see uh, basically I've been focused on um, what we can get out of um, a single voice in terms of interesting effects 
Um, I'd be very interested in from the musicians out there as to um, what they think of that and uh, what we can do. Obviously, fundamentally, we're constrained by um, the fact that we can only generate square waves, so um, we don't have any voltage, uh, any voltage control filter or anything else that would allow us to add more timbre to the to the notes. The next things I want to look at basically is to see whether or not we can trade some of the polyphony for additional richness in um, the individual sounds. So what I'm thinking there is that uh, we would construct instruments out of uh, by tying several voices together. And each voice would have its own volume and pitch envelope um, which should then allow you to have different effects on the two voices. So when you played one note you would trigger two sounds uh, with different envelopes. Um, what we'd also do in tying the two notes together is, is sorry, in tying the two voices together is to allow the um, two voices to play different notes through a fixed pitch shift and also uh, allow the possibility to delay the playing of one of the notes in time so that you could add echo or delay type effects. Um, and at that point we could also look to introduce the ability to trigger the sound channels, excuse me, as well as the um, nor as well as the normal tone channels. So again, to build some richness into into the sound, and obviously then there are other things like improving the UI, which, uh, as I said, is very basic. Adding presets so you don't have to keep mucking around with it, etc. So there we go. That's where we're at for the moment. Uh, speak to you soon. Cheers.